Not all surprises are good surprises and not even in Disneyland Paris. Just because you've booked a family friendly holiday at Disneyland Paris and you're going to be in the Disney bubble doesn't mean you're not going to come across some weird stuff. So keep watching and I'm going to help you stay safe. This one is one that catches most people out and even the seasoned pros and that's the fine-tuned marketing. Disney hires some of the best and they have a great way with words. Don't forget to read the small print, especially if you're going to bundle together your accommodation, park tickets and travel. Do some mock bookings and then break them down and book things individually just to see if you can get the best price for you. Occasionally, Disneyland Paris will do special offers and discounts but just double check as sometimes you can't combine this with what you want. So if you're looking to book at a specific hotel or certain dates, just read the small print. Cheap Disneyland Paris tickets at the cost of your time. Disneyland Paris tickets do not come cheap these days. So if a third party is offering you a really good deal that seems too good to be true, you know, whether offering you tickets for half price or less, it's definitely too good to be true. So make sure you run them off from that deal and don't look back. So these kind of offers are going to be a huge waste of your time. Also, if someone is trying to sell you day tickets into the parks or tickets to special events such as the Halloween events and Christmas, do not buy them. Tickets are limited to a specific person and Disney even state this, that tickets are not transferable. The best place to find legitimate tickets is from Disney itself. Single rider lines. Yes, totally free, unlike the fast pass lanes. And you can get on a ride way quicker than you would standing in the normal queue because there aren't many people who are going to be traveling alone or want to ride a ride by themselves. However, this isn't always the case for certain rides, such as Crusher's Coaster. I have seen the single rider line for Crusher's Coaster at pretty much the same wait time as the general queue. And everyone else has had the same idea to break up their group and ride the ride as a single rider. It can feel a little scammy as usually you can get on a ride way quicker using the single rider line. But just weigh up the pros and cons of not buying fast passes or premier access. Maybe just hit up those rides during extra magic hour, earlier on in the day if you're a general ticket holder or later on in the evening, as rides do tend to be a little bit quieter. Taking advantage of FOMO. As I said previously, Disney are at the top of their game when it comes to marketing and their way with words. They're really good at hitting your I'm gonna miss out nerve. And you know what? They always get me. They will make things either super exclusive or limited during certain times of the year. And it's true, they are. I know that super cute item you had your eye on now turns into a must have while you're there. Disney launch new merch and snacks all the time because they want you to feel like you don't want to miss out. Now, do you remember when the 30th anniversary was launched and the soap dispensers came out that pump a little blob of Mickey-shaped soap into your hand? People went nuts over them and cast members couldn't restock the shelves quick enough. I know I love mine, but I hung on a little bit and that stock came back in. To keep your FOMO under control when you're in the parks, do a little bit of research. Not only is research super helpful when you're looking at which hotel you want to stay in, or which restaurant you want to eat at. But it's also super handy when it comes to merch. But doing your research will also help you come up with a realistic spend budget for when you're in the parks. Also, check out Shop Disney, as sometimes they do have the theme park merch in there and that limited edition merch. The Disneyland Paris meal plans can seem a little bit scammy if you don't know how to use them or use them well. There are people that love the meal plans. There are people that hate the meal plans. And there are people that have no idea what I'm talking about. The Disneyland Paris meal plan can be bolted onto your package at any point during your booking or later on if you change your mind. The Disneyland Paris meal plans are not a scam at all. And a lot of people like the fact that they have already budgeted for food and prepaid for food before their holiday so that it's already taken care of in advance. However, the meal plans are not a way to save money. Disneyland Paris price their meal plans at the top end of meal prices. If you do buy a meal plan, there's a good chance that you're going to be paying for more food than what you would eat or for more expensive meals that you wouldn't book. So plan which restaurants you want to eat at and see how you can get your money's worth out of the plans. Instead of using the plans in the quick service restaurants, maybe plan in the higher end restaurants such as the Manhattan restaurant in the Art of Marvel Hotel, Bistro Chez Remy, or Captain Jack's. Or if you know you're going to be super hungry while staying in the parks, plan in some buffet restaurants, such as the downtown restaurant in the Art of Marvel Hotel, Pim Kitchen in the Walt Disney Studios, and Billy Bob's in Disney Village. 
There you're not limited to one plate of food as it's an all you can eat buffet. Also, Casey Juniors at the end of Main Street have some really good hot dogs and are not shy with their portion sizes. Disneyland Paris is not an unsafe place where you have to keep looking over your shoulder all the time. But you also need to keep your head screwed on. Always do your research, mull over things yourself or ask for advice. So feel free to drop any questions you want in the comments below. If you did find this video useful, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and please consider subscribing and I'll see you again soon.